The first day, my mind is like a jumping bean on a hot pan. What I am going to do, what I am going to see, what I, what I. In a few days, I settle down into a routine, get up hours before sunrise, walk and photograph until dark. In a week, I am lonely. I wish I had someone to talk with. In two weeks, I talk with myself. In three weeks, I see things differently. Sometimes we look for things that are the realm of maybe dreams and magic that, uh, that are beyond our normal every day. And Sierra San Luis is kind of the crossroads of both. It's this understated little mountain range that has somehow always been at the center of things and is where I ended up on the, after a long journey of trying to find some vestige of a wild place along the border. The borderlands are where things happen. And the reason for that is they're unsettled. And unsettled works both ways. I think they're emotionally unsettled. Oftentimes when I go to the borderlands, I'm just not in the right place and it's like, oh, this is, you know, I kind of feel a little edgy. I kind of feel it's a little dangerous. Stuff's happening here. Where am I going to sleep? What's going to happen? But literally, they're unsettled. They're some of the least populated landscapes in both Mexico and America. And that actually is the reason why the border is there. It's the hardest place to be. You know, part of it is the Rio Grande, where it's forming these canyons. And part of it is that it is uh, these desert lands where water is at a premium. And, and it's, it's the space that's much harder to navigate. These are the landscapes that are all around us, but that we often don't see. Part of what I'm wound up in is, is that initial discovery and learning. To, so it may be more about learning to see than seeing that interests me. Something like the Sierra San Luis is that it's, it's a tale that's not yet told. It's, it's what it'll be in the future is still in flux. The Sierra Madres and the Rocky Mountains begin and end there. Both the Sonoran and Chihuahuan Desert. One side is the Sonoran Desert, the other side's Chihuahua. All these things are coming together within the mountains. One of the things in making photographs now is the relationship is much more fluid. So I'm able to carry a smaller camera that literally I just strap it right here on my chest. And I'm often just making photographs as one would, this is interesting to look at. Sometimes I do apply a, a, an editorial that I've learned, like, oh, this would make a good photograph. But there are reasons you make photographs and one is to share experience it is, it, with friends is something we do. You know, I have an old friend from high school who on occasion has come out to visit me and I've taken him in the woods. I've left him alone in the dark and scared the wits out of him. So I sent him like six photographs of this landscape that I'm working in and at the end I showed this head of this animal and it's kind of dried out with these beautiful white large canines and I told him it was a werewolf. And he actually believed me. And I got, immediately got an email that said, tell me this isn't true. And he was totally freaked out. And I was like, no, 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 it, it's, it's just a bear. He was just like, Michael's a crazy guy. And if anyone's going to see a werewolf and find him, it's him. Something that I don't do as much as really is that thing when you step back and look at the landscape. You know, you, you give perspective. As I, I often forget to do that because that's not how you walk through a landscape. You're not looking around at the, oh, what a beautiful mountain. You're like, I don't want to step on, I don't want to step on a cactus, I don't want to step on a snake. 
So often I think my photographs are inclined to reflect like looking at the ground is really the first and foremost thing. But there is something more formal for me about stepping back and, and what is this place. I know what I'm looking for is a healthy ecosystem. It's that simple and, and it's the thing I can never find. In the center of the Sierra San Luis is a grass and scrub oak kind of forest and then it's surrounded by a horseshoe of mountains and it's probably the best wolf habitat I've ever seen. In my experience, you know, I've seen them there and they've tried to bring them back and there are rumors that they may exist but at the same time people I'm friends with have shot and killed the wolves so it's a complicated world out there. And, and you have to learn, learn to be part of that. The photograph is the tool I'm using to connect me to the landscape. Often the things that are most important to us don't exist in the structure of conscious thought where you're doing something like what language does, where you go from one idea to another idea in a coherent way. So what's nascent and within the work is really this thing I don't understand. When you begin to bring words or images to something, a lot of traditions have that idea is you steal the spirit. But yet, it's one of the ways we communicate and I've chosen to embrace this. So it is that realm of catch-22 is that you want to tell other people, you know, like what's in these photographs and it's, you know, it's the ineffable. It's, it's the thing I can never see. It's the thing I can never speak to. I'm talking about the way humans see these landscapes. And these, you know, these landscapes are inhabited by a broad spectrum of life. And we're only one little part of that. How do you see what's there?